Hey, what is going on guys? In this video, explaining the concept behind drivers, not, you know, NASCAR drivers, stuff like that. I'm talking about drivers when it comes to computers. So what is drivers? Drivers are essentially a piece of software that allows your computer to communicate with a device that is connected to the computer. Now this can range from almost anything. It can range from a camera that's being connected to your computer. It can range from something even as simple as, yes, USB sticks. You might not even notice it, but you do require drivers for your computer to use USB sticks. You might not even notice it's happening in the background that Windows, we'll be using Windows a lot for this uh, video example, is installing drivers to use this device. And it'll also include using such devices as cell phones connected to your computer. And the list just goes on. I mean, that in a nutshell is how drivers work. But for those of you who are not so tech savvy and you still don't understand, let's take this to a real life example and then come back to the computer aspect of it. So in real life, this would be similar to someone giving you a spoon and a knife for the first time to use without instructions, which is drivers. So you would end up trying to cut with a spoon, for example, which wouldn't really work too well. Or even worse, you would try to eat cereal with a knife and it would flop big time. So now that I've given you some pretty awful real life examples, you pretty much now have an understanding that drivers are essentially an instruction manual for a computer to use. I mean, if I had to assemble a barbecue, for example, I'm going to use the instruction manual because it's presented in front of me, but I don't know what to do with it. That's exactly what drivers are for computers, it's like a digital instruction book, I guess you can say. Now sometimes this doesn't even involve having to connect a device, like a USB stick for example. Sometimes it can include parts already inside your computer. Say for example you got a gaming machine and you want to reformat and you have a new version of Windows, but you notice that the screen is really blurry compared to before. That's because maybe your graphic card driver is not installed. You have a graphic card, but the computer doesn't know what to do with it. So even though it's physically connected inside, your computer still doesn't understand what to do with it. Now, newer versions of Windows are trying to be smart, but they try to automatically detect drivers and install it for you. For example, if you were to plug in a USB stick for the first time, you might notice a little bubble in the bottom right corner of your screen where it's like, hey, drivers are installing. That's Windows trying to do that work for you. Now, in some instances, when it comes to, say, graphic cards, for example, Windows will try to install the drivers for you, but it might not do a good job. In those cases, if you notice that it's not performing as well, it might be best to go to the manufacturer's website and try to find it yourself. Or say, for example, if I'm trying to do some data transfer between my phone, my computer, and it's not working properly, in this example, we have the Samsung Galaxy Note 5, Windows will try to do it, but sometimes it'll flop. If it does flop, in that case, what you have to do, best thing, is use Google. What I would Google in this case is a Samsung Galaxy Note 5, which is a phone, drivers. Say for example, the camera that I'm recording with, if I connect it to the computer and Windows drivers doesn't install, well, I would go to Google and I would type Sony HX20V drivers. That's all you can pretty much do is search the internet, but be safe because some of those sites have miscellaneous software that is not really safe for your computer. Try to get it from the manufacturer's website itself. Now in some cases, when you go to a manufacturer's website, we'll stick with the Galaxy Note 5 example, you might be given a selection of drivers, one for Windows x86 or Windows x64. Well, that depends on the version of Windows you have, for example. So in this case, I have Windows 10 upstairs and I 64 bit. So in that case, I would select Windows 10 drivers x64, x86, I know it's confusing, but that can refer to 32 bit of Windows. Now that's usually not the end of the world if you end up getting it. Say for example, when Windows 10 first came out, I needed drivers for a certain uh, USB device. It wouldn't work, I had to end up getting drivers that were designed for Windows 8. Now you're still kind of being a little bit risky with this, but it did end up working and eventually the manufacturer did release Windows 10 drivers. So there's no harm in doing it, but try to get the ones compatible with your version of Windows. So in a nutshell, if a component is plugged into your computer and your computer doesn't know what to do with it, you'll then require the drivers, which is kind of like a digital instruction manual for your computer to use and then recognize and communicate with that device. So I hope you guys found this video useful. Be sure to check out my Facebook, Google+, Twitter, Instagram links in the video description. Hit that like button, it does help. Subscribe and thanks for watching.